hi guys welcome back so today's tutorial kiki actually inspired today's tutorial so i saw her during the week in this shade and then i immediately fell in love with it and then you know the flesh of being a fashion designer so i decided to recreate it please guys that's my recreation and then we are going to be needing a tube top for this particular shirt so just as you can see in the video so if this is your first time here my name is lillian thank you so much for stopping by please click the subscribe button also turn on the notification bell thank you so much guys let's get into it for today's so today we're going to be needing paper stay either paper stay or color stay and then we're going to be needing net so either net or chantilly so whichever one you have available make sure it's not too stretchy and then we are also going to be needing a cara so you are going to be needing about one and a half years or two years so it actually depends on what you want and then button also shared button we are also going to be needing shared button so guys we are going to dive into drafting of the pattern so come down by two inches and then what you're going to do is to mark your neck my neckline first of all i'm going to come down by three inches we are we are actually marking both front and back neckline so first of all go down by three inches and then make your neck with three inches so go ahead and then create your neckline so just carefully create your neckline after creating your neckline you are going to also mark one and a half inch and then connect it also to the three inches width that you have that is actually for the back pattern because we are marking we are actually drafting both front and back in one pattern so the next thing is to divide your shoulder measurement by two my is 14 divided by two which is seven so i already marked that and then i'm going to come down by my chest line so in as much as we are actually making shade we are supposed to create room like maybe add extra one inch to our our chest line but we are not going to be doing that now because of the style inspiration that we are working with so just as you can see me i'm marking my actual chest line okay so you are also going to do the same thing except if you want to do otherwise it's allowed so i'm going to label out and then i'm going to go in by seven inches which is also my shoulder measurement and then connect it back to my shoulder so from my shoulder slope for my shoulder slope i'm going to be using one and a half inch note that this one and a half is actually not standard okay it's just what i use because i add the inches on my chest line which is supposed to be seven and a half so i'm going to find the midpoint of my armhole and then i'm going to mark it and then go in by 0 0.5 inch or half inch and then i'm going to connect it back to my shoulder slant just as you can see now so the next thing i'm going to do is to come down from my shoulder to my half length or my waist length which is 16 inches so whatever you call it i'm going to mark my 16 inches and then i'm going to go ahead and then create my waistline so i'm just going to label it and then the next thing i'm going to do is to mark my waist to hip line so i'm using nine inches it's also not standard so whatever if you use eight inches go ahead and mark it whatever you use is what we're going to mark so guys next i'm going to do is to divide my round bossy conference by four which is nine inches because my round boss is 36 so i'm just going to connect it to my midpoint my waistline i'm going to be marking seven inches which is my round waist circumference divided by four because my waist circumference is 28 then i will connect it back to my chest line so after doing that you can see i mark seven inches i'm going to mark 10 inches on my hip line which is my hip circumference divided by four because i'm making use of 40 inches so guys next thing i'm going to do i'm going to determine my full front length so i don't actually want it to get to my hip line so i'm going to come down by i think seven and a half is okay i'm just going to mark seven and a half inch notes so that you can naturally use whatever you want so i'm going to be marking seven and a half inch and then i'm going to go up at the side by one inch because i want to give it a slight curve like a very slight curve at the side i don't want it to be too much so guys so this is just go ahead and then add your allowance round so just as you can see from allowance i added one inch at the side so you can actually add one and a half inch and then at the bottom i added half inch and then for my neckline and my shoulder slant i added half inch so this makes sense remember at the side you can actually add more than one inch that is if you want if you want it to be free you don't want it tight then you can do that okay it's allowed so whatever works for you is what you're going to do so this is it so we are just going to go ahead now and then cut out so just as you can see me do also go ahead and then cut out so we are going to first of all cut out the back pattern so i'm going to turn this to the back so that it won't be confusing for us remember the back of shirt is always on fold okay remember the back of shirt we always cut it on fold so you need to place your fabric on fold just as you can see me too 
and then go ahead and pin down so guys this is it so for the back pattern i want to actually give it a kind of shape at the back so you can see what i'm doing i'm going to add a curve there and then bring it down to the center back so i'm adding more a uh, length to the center back just as you can see so i have roughly three inches there just as you can see so do the same just curve it back to the side so this is us trying to like give the back a kind of a nice shape so i'm going to go ahead and cut that you can actually choose to ignore it if you don't want it you have seen my finished look so if you don't want it you can as well ignore it guys this is it for the back so what we are going to do we are going to cut out the front so this is it i'm just going to set it aside and then we are going to cut out the front piece so i'm going to label this as the front now and then to my neckline i'm going to add remember we can that by three inches so that's the neckline for our front so just add half inch just as you can see me do now and then cut out the rest that we have so we don't have any business with that anymore so just cut it off so place your pattern on folds in as much as we place it on fold we are still going to cut it to one one piece because it's the front remember it's shirt we are actually making so i'm going to pin down so this is it. so guys i will advise that you add half inch to your center front okay add half inch to the center front so that you can actually use it to join your button stand so i really didn't add because i forgot not because i don't want to so add. you can actually see me cutting out my main uh pattern instead of adding half inch there so i'm just cutting out the exact pattern so please add half inch to your setup front so hope this makes sense remember we are not working with the same net so i don't know the type of nets that you are working with so try to add half inch to be on the safer side so guys so this is it so we already cut out both piece we already cut out front and back with the same pattern so guys what we are going to do now we're going to join it shoulder to shoulder so just as you can see me do i don't actually have right side or right side facing the right side because of the type of net i'm actually working with it has no front and back but whatever you you are doing i don't know the type of fabric we're using so you are going to join it right side facing the right side so hope that makes sense so just as you can see pin down on the shoulder line so i'm going to pin this side not like we're actually joining it at the side for now but i'm just going to pin it so that it will be easier for me to join so just join by half inch on the shoulder line so please don't join the side there's just the shoulder line so hope this makes sense that is what we are going to do we are going to take the circumference of the center front so the front piece take the circumference of what you have there so whatever it is we are going to add extra inches to it okay so that we can actually use it as our button stand so i'm going to set it aside so we are going to cut out our button stand so i'll be cutting out four inches so that by the time i fold in half inch on both sides we're left with three inches which i will also fold into two and then i will be left with one and a half inch which is what i want to use as my spotting stand so whatever you want to use as your spotting stand is actually your choice you can choose to cut three inches and then at the end of the day you have one inch as your spotting stand it actually depends so for the length i actually cut out my length and then i added extra inches at least out up to four inches or two inches whatever works for you so i'm going to cut that so remember the button stand is going to be on both sides so i'll have to cut out another piece which is also the same width four inches width and then the length is also going to be the same just as you can see me too so go ahead and do the same cut out your button stand like i said i'm using four inches width and then the length i added extra inches I'm going to go over to my ironing board and then i'll add paper stay to my button stand so i don't know whatever you actually used to make your sieve before now go ahead and do that okay it's not most that i use paper stay so whatever works for you is what you are going to do so my fabric is actually a bit light so this paper stay i'm going to actually double it like after adding one i'm going to double it add another one that is two times per button stand so i'll do the same thing to the other piece So guys after cutting out what we are going to do is to mark out half half inch on both sides so we are going to iron it in so if you know you can actually iron correctly without mistake you can as well go ahead and iron without marking 
So remember, we are actually working with Net or maybe Chantilly, so whatever you were able to get. So you need to be very careful, okay? Make sure you mark out. It's actually better you mark out so that you fold in the correct allowance and then so you can actually have a very fine finished look. So hope that makes sense. So after marking, what I'm going to do now is to take my iron and then iron the half inch in. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to do the same thing to the other of my button stand. Guys, after folding in on both ends, you are also going to fold in two two. You can see what I'm doing, and then go ahead and then press it down. Okay, make sure they are in two two equal half, and then go ahead and then iron it very well. So we are going to do the same thing to this other piece. Also fold in half inch on both sides. So after folding it on both sides, then fold in two two again. Just fold it in two two and then iron it. Make sure it's very straight, just as you can see me do. Fold it again and then iron it. so guys this is it so this is it now so what we are going to do i'm going to bring in my pin so as you can see i already joined it at the shoulder remember ask us not to join the side here so we are going to add it to our front piece so i'm actually joining it from the wrong side you can see what i'm doing so i was supposed to actually use half inch remember like i told us to actually add half inch to our center front so that we can actually use it to join our button stand so if you did add that half inch all you need to do is to actually sew by the half inch we'll actually use our iron to iron in so hope that makes sense so what you need to do is to pin down and then join by half inch okay the same half inch you iron in on your button stand that is if you actually did add that half inch so that was why i actually made mention of us adding the half inch i didn't add so i'm going to sew very small okay i'm not going to sew up to half inch so that i won't shorten my lama so after sewing we are going to turn it to the right side and then top stitch like this so hope this makes sense we are going to do the same thing to the other side of the piece also so i'll do just that and then i'll bring it back so guys this is it after joining just like i instructed was already drawn an iron out so i'm going to open this up now so remember on the neckline we are actually going to use half inch to join our collar so what we are going to do we are going to mark at two and half inch okay one half inch is going to be for joining our collar and then the other two inches is space we are going to create before we add our ruffle so that it won't be a problem so that our collar can actually sit we are just trying to create space for our collar to actually sit perfectly so hope that makes sense so mark two and a half inch and then the ruffle we are going to add is going to get to our waistline you can actually see my waistline is very well defined there so i'm trying to use my truck now to actually mark out my waistline then connect it to the front so guys you cannot really see it because i'm using a white stroke and then my table is white so just watch what i'm doing by the time i'm also done joining i'm going to explain it so that we we'll understand better so this thing i'm marking now is ruffle that we are going to have there so guys i'm also going to repeat the same thing at the back so the center of my back piece i'm going to mark at the middle so you cannot see it because of the color of chalk and then the color of my table so just watch what i'm doing then from that two and a half inch i'm going to curve it into the middle of my center back guys i'm going to curve it into my center back and then i'll stop at the waistline so hope this makes sense so i will explain it better like i said after joining the ruffle so let's go ahead and cut out the ruffle so i'm just going to measure from my back waistline from the back waistline i'm going to measure into the front waistline so that i will see the length of what i have there so you can see the length i have so i'm going to remember it's rough what we are going to be adding you can choose to double the length so that you have enough fullness or triple it depending on the fabric you have available so i don't have enough fabric so this is actually what i have so this is seven inches width and then for the length you can see what i'm measuring it's actually full tape two full tape okay two tape the second time then i also have 17 inches so guys i'm actually going to slit each of these pieces into two like i said i don't have enough fabric so i'm just making use of what i have available so this is the second one it's also the same with seven inches and then the same length and then this is the third one this one is eight inches i'm going to slit it into two so that we'll have six in total and then i'll bring it back so this is it so i already slit each so what i have here now is actually six in total so that three will be on one side and then three will be on the other side and then i hem the edges by half inch so i really didn't hem the hemline okay 
the edges is what actually him so that is what you are also going to do so i'm going to bring in my piece now so i'm going to also try to explain what i was doing before then after joining i'm going to still detail the explanation so that we we'll understand it better so just like i said you are going to mark a two and a half inch okay you can see what i'm doing i mark a two and a half inch and then just connect it just watch carefully it's not showing because of my chalk and my table so you are going to connect it like so so all you need to do is to repeat the same thing okay just fold your center back into two like so into two equal half and then do where to mark the midpoint so you can see what i'm doing do where to mark the midpoint open it up so i'm just going to mark my center so that it will be obvious i'm actually seeing it but i don't think it's showing on my camera so that's actually the main issue here so the thing i'm going to do now is to add this ruffle so this ruffle this one i'm starting with this eight inches ruffle just as you can see this particular one is the eight inches so we are going to you can see what i'm doing so you are going to join it like this okay join it up from your waistline to your back waistline but there is a way we are going to be joining it so you saw how i actually mark out when i was marking the front so we are going to the back ruffle is going to be at the midpoint okay it's going to be in between the center line that will mark and then at the front is going to also be on the waistline very close to our button stand so you can see what i'm doing so how i mark is how i'm going to actually join this ruffle so like i said i don't know how i'm going to explain it right now so that we can actually get it but just watch what i'm doing like i said after joining the ruffle i'm still going to explain it don't forget that we are actually joining the ruffle on the right side okay and the ruffle you are going to place it right side facing the right side so as you can see the hemline i'm yet to actually sew so don't hem it yet okay you are only hemming the side that is the width so don't hem the hemline yet so this is it so this is actually how we are going to join it and then we'll leave out that space that two and a half inches space so hope this makes sense so guys after the first one you add the second one the second seven inches remember we actually have another two seven inches so i'm going to bring that in now so after this first one this is it for the seven inches i'm going to measure so that you see it so what you're going to do after the first one we are going to join the second one okay also join the second one like very close you can as well mark out like one inch you can actually make it like one inch different and then you are going to sew okay so after sewing the second one all you need to do is to add the third one again like mark out one inch different also take note of your armhole so that remember we are going to be joining sleeves so you don't want your ruffle to actually disturb you when you are adding your sleeve so this is also seven inches just as you can see so after sewing the second one just join the third one that's the three piece so i will do just that and bring it back so that i can actually explain this better guys so this is it after joining my ruffle so just as you can see so i actually join my ruffle before joining at the side please make sure you already attach your ruffle before joining it at the side by one inch so i'm just going to open it up so guys so you can actually see how i actually joined this so from the front this is the first layer as you can see and then this is the second layer and then the third layer so i'm going to turn it to the back so that you can actually see how i join it so you can see it so from the midpoint you are going down to your waistline so from that two inches on your shoulder line that is how you are going to bring it down so you create something like a v at the back and then join so you can actually see it. so i'm going to turn it also to the front so guys so this is it so you can actually ask me any question if you are confused on this so i'm going to set it aside now so that we can cut out the sleeve what we are going to be needing is our normal basic sleeve from your shoulder to your wrist so i went top by three inches just as you can see so the other side is going to be net I actually label it net while the other three inches is going to be fabric so i'm going to slit it into two and then i'm going to go ahead now and then cut that so do it to label up and down so that you not be confused when you are joining it to the main piece so hope this makes sense so i'm going to cut that now just like i said this other bigger one is going to be the net so i'm going to add half inches remember we are joining to the other side so i'm just going to go ahead now and cut that
so guys this is it so i also already cut out my three inches for the akara so what we are going to do now we're going to join it at the hemline by half inch okay so just go ahead the three inches you cut out you are going to join it on the hemline okay after joining on the hemline go ahead and then fix it on your shirt so i will do just that and then i'll bring it back so guys so this is it so i already went ahead to fix just like i instructed us so i already fix so this is it now okay so this is it for the other side and then i already hem it so this is it so we are going to take the neckline circumference so that we can actually cut out our collar so you are going to take the neckline circumference so guys please don't stretch your neckline okay remember it's net we are working with so you need to be careful and then take these measurements more than once to make sure that you are actually having the same measurement please take it more than once it's possible do it three times or four times so cut out the collar you are going to bring in a pattern paper and then place it on fold so make sure the width will be enough for your round uh, neckline divided by two so whatever your neckline is just as you can see me i'm just going to cut off what i have at the top there so what i'm going to do now my neckline i'm going to divide it by two so whatever remember this paper is on fold so for instance you have 18 divide 18 by 2 if it is 19 divided by 2 so i'm just going to mark my divide by 2 at that point and then i'm going to connect it straight line. so the round neckline of our shirt is actually what we divided by two so hope this makes sense so we are going to be marking one at 1.25 inches so this is going to be our color width so it actually depends you can actually use one and a half inch but i'm going to be using 1.25 because i don't want my color to be too big okay, so this is it so i'm just going to go ahead and then create a line there so i'm going to mark a line there and then after doing that i'm going to go in on this side by half inch so hope this makes sense go in by half inch and then curve it in okay just look at what i'm doing try to curve it in very well so curve it in after doing that i'm going to go in by one inch so from that point the main line that went up it go in by one inch and then go all by two and a half inch okay so we are using a height of two and a half inch and then i'm going to create a line so hope this makes sense so after doing that i'm going to go add by half inch okay so i'm going to go up by half inch it's after doing that so whatever we have added down we are going to take it to the top remember we we'll mark 1.25 so we are going to repeat the same thing there so after doing that you're going to take your curve ruler. so i'm just going to that too and remember we actually went out by half inch there so i'm going to create the line there and then make it longer than my actual line so after doing that i'm going to take my curve ruler and then i'll connect it from that point back to the 1.25 that we have on the other side so hope this is not confusing so after doing that this is it for our color so all we need to do now is to go ahead and then cut out guys we are going to be cutting out the 1.25 first so you can see how i'm cutting it out from that curvy point just go ahead and then cut out the 1.25 first so this is it so we are going to cut out the other heights so just as you can see me too also do it to cut out the same way so just carefully cut out like so so this is so we are going to cut this out on our fabric so we are going to be cutting two two pieces each so guys so this is it i already cut out of my fabric and then i added my paper stick to each so just as you can see i added paper stick to one of these and then i added paper stick to one of the other one so i didn't add paper stick to both so you are going to do the same thing and then you can see that i left out a half inch allowance that i added so i didn't add paper stick to the half inch allowance so you're also going to do the same thing so what we are going to do now we are going to turn it over and then we are going to join the other piece that we didn't have paper stick to so what we are going to do now is to join by half inch so we are going to join at the side by half inch and then sew at the top by half inch and then sew on the other side by half inch so hope this is understood so the down we are going to leave it out don't sew the down yet so i'm going to set it aside and then for this other one we are also going to fold in so you are going to fold in this is the one that has the paper um, the paper stays so you are going to fold in at this point by half inch so guys so the curvy part is the top so if you can see very well this side i'm adding this hemming gum to is the down so that's the side we are also going to add the hemming gum and then fold in by half inch so i will do just that and then i'll bring it back guys so this is it so i already went ahead to sew just like i instructed us you can see the down so i just saw this side and i turn it out to an iron so you can see the down i didn't join it just like i instructed us so this is it for the second one already hem in half inch just as you can see so what we are going to do now is to notch the midpoint fold each of the pieces into two just as you can see me to now and then notch the midpoint okay notch the midpoint of this and then do the same thing to this fold into two 
notch the main point so the other one also you are also going to do the same thing fold it into two equal half and then notch the midpoint so hope this makes sense so what you are going to do the one with that paper stay you are going to place it down first so remember this is how our color is going to sit on us okay so this is going to sit so we are going to place it like so notch to notch don't forget so place it like that notch to notch and then this other one you are going to put it at the top okay so hope this makes sense so we are going to join by half inch so we are going to join like this from that point to the other end by half inch so hope this makes sense so i will do just that and then i'll bring it back so just join by half inch okay guys so this is it so i already joined just as you can see just like i instructed us so i'm going to turn it over now to the right side so hope this is not confusing so i'm just going to turn it out just as you can see me do do it to do the same so after turning it out i'm going to go over to my ironing board and then iron it properly then i'll bring it back oh so guys so this is it after ironing out i already ironed out so we are going to bring in the shirts now so what we are going to do so our advice you don't know so that you don't expand your neckline please don't know okay just fold it into two to find the midpoint and then you are going to mark the midpoint with chalk so except you are working with normal akara but don't notch just mark it with chalk it's actually safer so that you don't end up expanding the neckline so what we are going to do bring in the piece so the color the side we are joining first is the side that has no paper stain okay the side without paper stay is the side we are going to be joining with first we are going to join the right side facing the right side so the notch meet points to the points that will mark our chalk on go ahead and then pin down just as you can see me too so you are going to pin it from that point to the other end so just carefully do this okay you need to be very careful don't drag your net so that your neckline would won't expand so that is one of the things you need to be careful of the type of nets that you are going to use or chantilly so make sure they are not too stretchy make sure they are not stretchy because it's going to give you issues so just as you can see me do align it to the other side pin down and then do the same thing here align it so if you actually cut and sew your collar correctly you won't have excess at all just as you can see mine is actually aligning so we are going to repeat the same thing here open it at that end and then make sure they are aligning and then pin down so if you measure very well and cut out very well and then sew very well you won't have issue so i'm going what we are going to do now after pinning is to join by half inch so this makes sense so pin down very well and then we are going to join by half inch so open it up we are going to join by half inch so hope this makes sense so after joining by half inch you are going to turn it over just push in the allowance and then top stitch so i'm going to go ahead and do that and then i'll bring it back join by half inch and then push everything in okay like so and then go ahead and then top stitch so i will do just that and then i'll bring it back so guys so this is it after joining so you can see it so this is it so just stop stitch and then that is it so we are going to go ahead now and then add our button so this is it we are already done so what we are going to do for the layers if you actually have any layers covering each other all you need to do is to reduce that layer okay so make sure that the three um row food that we added they are all showing correctly so if you need to trim any one of you trim so that the rest of it will show very well so the ruffle we have around the waistline just as you can see me demonstrating we are going to trim off a bit so i will share my finished look you have seen my finished look you know what to do so just reduce it a bit so that it won't be too much like on that waistline area so hope this makes sense so guys so this is it for this tutorial just go ahead and then add your button stand and then you are going to hem it down so if you want so when you come over to our color stand fold in the allowance and then top stitch so i will do just that and then i'll share the finished look with us so guys thank you so much for watching so here comes the finished look so just like i said make sure that your three layers are showing so if you need to trim off anyone for the other one to be showing make sure you do so guys the tutorial is going to be in another video thank you so much i will see you in my next video bye bye